welcome to this Astranti YouTube video. And in this short video, we'll be going through some of the provisions of IAS 21, which is a key accounting standard when it comes to accounting for foreign transactions and foreign operations. And in this video, we'll be mostly focusing on different types of currency. So first of all, we're going to consider the objective of IAS 21, what the purpose is, why the IASB wanted to issue it at all. So the objective of this standard is to prescribe how to include foreign currency transactions and foreign operations in the financial statements of an entity and how to translate financial statements into what is called a presentation currency. So those are the three areas that I've already outlined. Foreign currency transactions, foreign operations, translating foreign operations, and translating statements into presentation currencies. And IAS 21 distinguishes between different types of foreign activity. One of those types is an individual transaction in foreign currencies. So an individual foreign currency transaction is one that has been made in a foreign currency or requires settlement in a foreign currency. So examples would include the purchase or sale of goods or services where the actual price is denominated in a foreign currency. Same would apply for any borrowing or lending of funds that are denominated in a foreign currency. It could even apply to an acquisition or disposal of assets that are denominated in a foreign currency. So to give you an example, if you imagine a British food company that purchases ingredients from Spain. So the British food company, their local currency is going to be pounds sterling and all of their financial statements are presented in pounds sterling. But because they're buying their ingredients from Spain and they're paying in euros, a lot of their financial transactions are going to take place in euros. That's a foreign currency. And what has to happen then is those transactions that are paid for in euros need to be translated so that they can be put into the British company's financial statements that are shown in pounds. Okay, so because the transactions are occurring in a foreign currency, the British company would use IAS 21 to find the rules for how to account for those individual transactions. And essentially what you're doing is translating those transactions that are denominated in euros into pounds so the British company can put them into their financial statements along with everything else that is also done in pounds sterling. So that's one type of foreign activity identified by IAS 21. The other is a foreign operation. And a foreign operation is an entity that is a subsidiary or an associate or a joint venture or a branch of a reporting entity that conduct their activities in a foreign currency. So let's say that the British company that we were talking about a minute ago also owns a French company too. They have a French subsidiary and all the transactions of that French company would be considered a foreign operation for the UK parent company. Okay, um, once again, in IAS 21, that's where we're going to find the rules for how to translate that French subsidiary into British pounds. So that can be shown in the British company's consolidated statements. And we need rules for that because, of course, exchange rates change all the time. The British pound compared to the euro, it's going to change on a daily basis throughout the year. So if you're trying to consolidate a French subsidiary, for an entire financial period, let's say a year, how are you going to do that and do it accurately given that the exchange rate will have been changing all throughout the year? How do you know how much that French subsidiary is worth in British pounds? Well, that's why we use IAS 21 and we'll see later on in the video what the rules are for doing the accounting. But before we get onto that, we've got a few more definitional aspects to look at. One of those is the different types of currency. So according to IAS 21, there are four different types of currency definition that we need to know about. And they're all fairly simple. We have functional, foreign, local, and presentation currency. And you can probably guess from the names what some of these are, but let's just go through them just to make sure that we're all on the same page here. So the functional currency, 
is the currency of an entity's primary economic environment. So in most cases, this is going to be the local currency. So a company based in the UK, for example, will use pound sterling as their functional currency. And this is based on the idea that a UK based company will be registered in the UK, it will have UK offices, it probably has UK bank accounts, it pays tax to the UK government. So for all intents and purposes, the functional currency from this company's perspective is British pounds sterling. Another type of currency is foreign currency, and this is simply any currency other than the functional currency of the entity. Okay, so for example, a UK based company uses pound sterling as their functional currency. So a foreign one would be anything that is not a pound sterling. So dollars, US dollars would be an example of a foreign currency for a UK based company. This is sort of a relative term because foreign currency is obviously going to depend on where the entity is based. A US company, their functional currency is most likely going to be US dollars. So a foreign currency to them would be the euro or the pound. Okay, so fairly simple so far. Let's move on. The local currency is the currency of the country in which the foreign entity is located. And usually it's going to be the same as the company's functional currency. So your functional currency, what determines that it is your functional currency is that you're based in that country. And that's where your offices are. That's where you pay taxes. That's where your bank account is, etc., etc. It's usually going to be the same as your local currency. But that's not necessarily always the case because nowadays that you have companies that have offices all over the world, their headquarters may be somewhere else to where they do the majority of their business. And so in some cases, you'll have local currencies that are different to functional currencies. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a US company, okay? So a company that may have registered in the United States, but their headquarters are in Europe which means the local currency will be the euro, even though the functional currency will be the dollar because it's a US company. That's where it's registered. Maybe that's where its taxes are paid. Maybe that's where it does a lot of its business. But they have European headquarters, perhaps for tax reasons or whatever that may be. So the local currency of that head office in Europe is euros, but the functional currency of the US company as a whole is dollars. Okay, the final type of currency we have is the presentation currency. And this is the currency in which the financial statements are presented. And it's possible for an entity to report in a presentation currency that is not its functional currency. So sometimes they may differ. And this might happen when you have a foreign owned subsidiary. So the subsidiary will have a presentation currency based on its parent. So the parent may be a US company, the subsidiary may be based in Europe, but the parent's functional currency is dollars. So the subsidiary will present its statements in dollars as well because it makes sense to do so because its parent is based in the US. Another example is in the oil and gas industry where the standard approach is to use the US dollar wherever the company is based because, because of the nature of oil and gas. They tend to be denominated in US dollars. Just That's just how the industry works. And so it makes sense for those companies working in the industry to denominate in US dollars, no matter where they are based. So a company in Russia or in the Gulf states may use US dollars because that's just the industry standard for oil and gas. So those are our four types of currency, a functional currency, a foreign currency, the local currency and presentation currency. So if you found that video useful, we have many more videos like that one on our YouTube channel. So give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want access to more of that content. We are also around in other places on social media. We have an Instagram page. We are available on Twitter and we have a number of Facebook groups related to which particular level you are at. So if you're an operational student, have a look for our operational group where you'll find useful content there. And of course, you can find us at our website, www.astranti.com, where you can get access to many free materials.